Greetings everybody, it's me, your friendly neighborhood, Uncle Pete, and welcome to the third episode of Let's Nail This, where viewers try and fix the kills that I gave one nail in the coffin. In my Nails in a Coffin series, I rate how well a person responds to a life-threatening situation, and I use Nails in a Coffin rating system. So if the victim fights really hard and makes the right choices, they can get up to four Nails in a Coffin. If they make dumb decisions or actions such as standing there, running upstairs instead of running outside, splitting up, I give them one Nail in the Coffin. Now, there's a lot of stupid decisions we see in horror movies, like I said, like splitting up, not running away, or like waiting till midnight to investigate a haunted house. And it can be frustrating when you see a victim doing something stupid, and you may even have said to yourself, if it was me, I would have done this. Well, that's what we're doing here on my Let's Nail This series. I'm assigning people kills that I gave one nails in the coffin to on my series, and I gave them one nail in the coffin because the victim was stupid. They did something dumb. So, an audience, in turn, is going to tell everybody else what they would have done if they were in the victim's position. Now, this is something we pretty much all do when watching a horror movie. We think about what we would have done. So, if you'd like to be part of this and be featured on my channel, just shoot me an email. Link will be down in the description. And I'll assign you a kill that I gave one nail in the coffin to. And then, we need you to let everybody know how you would have tried to survive this encounter. Just keep it based in reality. You're not saying you'd pull it. Don't say you'd pull a John Wick unless you are... John Wick or like Chuck Norris or something. Um, I do want to thank everybody who volunteered so far. It's been a lot of fun so far. And today we have my good friend, Professor Victor, who has his own channel, Horror Movie Syllabus. Definitely give him a subscribe. Check it out. I have a link to his channel in the description down below. I assigned him Jim and Susie's death in Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. You can't get the adrenaline pumping without the terror, good people. They were on a ship that was anchored in Crystal Lake. Ship's anchor came in contact with an electrical cable, and this electrical cable touched, J touched Jason, and he was still tied to the bottom of the lake after the events of Friday 13th Part 7. Jason climbed on the boat and pretty easily killed Jim and Susie without much effort, and I gave each of them one nail in the coffin since they really didn't do anything when they were in the face of danger. Professor Victor, let's nail this. Hello everyone, Professor Victor of the Horror Movie Syllabus here, and I've been tasked by everybody's favorite uh, friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete to evaluate uh, particular horror movie kills that he has already assigned one nail in the coffin to. Uncle Pete reached out to a bunch of us and asked us to provide some input on how we would have reacted in the situation of these kills to try to survive uh, in a way that was better, presumably, than the people who got one nail assigned to them by Uncle Pete. And God bless Uncle Pete because he assigned me some kills from Friday the 13th. The series that I love, you guys know that's uh, near and dear to my heart. So this is one that I feel like I can speak with some sort of intelligence to. But he also assigned me uh, specifically the first two kills from the movie Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Dick Manhattan. Not a great movie, man. Uh, it's not. Uh, but I still have fun with it. I still love it because I love me some Friday the 13th. And the two kills we're talking about are the first two kills in the movie, Jim and Susie. And Uncle Pete assigned both of them one nail in the coffin for their failure to get away from Jason and his spear gun as he crawls onto their boat. Now, if you're talking to me, Professor Victor, and how I would have avoided getting killed in this movie, the answer is obvious. I would never have gone on the boat. Professor Victor, don't dance with boats. Uh, I don't like them. I wouldn't have been on that boat. So Jason got on that boat. I would not have been there to kill. I would not even be there. My feet would be on dry land. Fine. But that's not really fun. That's not exactly what Uncle Pete's looking for. So let's look at the kills a little more closely. Jim and Susie are uh, making friends with each other, as Uncle Pete likes to say, when Jason comes in and surprises them. Uh, Susie goes bolting out the window. Uh, Jim just kind of sits there dumbfounded and takes a spear to die, uh, to his death. <laughs> And I think that that's a fair uh, one nail assignment from Uncle Pete because he just kind of sits there and doesn't try to defend himself, doesn't try to run, doesn't try to do anything. Now, if I'm Jim, honestly, there's not a whole lot you can do because it's Jason, right? You're not going to be able to take him, but he doesn't necessarily know that. We are led to believe that maybe he has an idea who Jason is because he has a Jason mask. Uh, so maybe he has an idea of just how powerful Jason is and he knows he can't take him. And maybe that's why he's frozen with fear. But you'd at least like to see him try to 
move, if nothing else. And if I'm Jim, I'm moving. Now, maybe I'm moving, trying to go out the window with Susie. But honestly, the timing of that, you probably get that spear in the butt, frankly. Uh, so I don't think that works out too well. Um, maybe you try to get by Jason or just try to go around him or something like that so you can run. But it's a narrow space. I don't think that really works either. Uh, you're either going to try to fight Jason, which you'll lose, but at least you'd go out fighting. Or you throw Susie at him. You throw Susie at him, you sacrifice her and save yourself. Not a very noble thing to do. I'd like to think that I wouldn't do that. Uh, you know, the assumption being that Jim actually likes Susie and doesn't want to have her die. Um, but honestly, that is the way to save yourself in that situation. Uh, I like to think I'd try to fight Jason and die nobly rather than uh, live like a punk by throwing the girl in, my, in, in, in his way and saving myself. But just gotta, I gotta cover all the bases, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to do here, Uncle Pete? Uh, cover all the bases? Hopefully, otherwise I'd look really bad right now. But uh, let's talk about Susie for a second because she bolts out that window the second she sees Jason and she runs away. She finds herself a hiding place. Now he finds her and the hiding place isn't great because she's kind of trapped. She has no place to go when he finds her. And Uncle Pete gave her one nail for this. And I think that's a little unfair. I think we need to revisit that, Uncle Pete, because I feel like she ran away when she first saw him. And she tried to hide rather than, uh, you know, fight him off and, and get killed or try to save uh, Jim or anything like that. Self-preservation. She tried to hide. And you gave her one nail. I feel like that's at least two nails uh, because she did a pretty good job trying to get away. Now, your thought was she should try to swim for it. Uh, but what if she can't swim? Or what if she's just thinking that this guy that just came in is obviously a good swimmer because he you know, was able to get on this boat. So maybe she didn't think that was the best way to go. Maybe she thought hiding was a better way to go. Um, but what I would have done if I was her is would have thrown something into the water to make it sound like I had gone to swim for it. So that maybe Jason would jump off the boat and try to chase me in the water. Meanwhile, I'm safe hiding in the boat. I also would have liked to have tried to find a spot that wasn't so enclosed and, and left me no place to run in case he did find me. But I liked the instinct of hiding, and I don't think it's fair to give her one nail. Uh, but I would have tried to uh, make Jason think that I'd made a run for it in the water by throwing something heavy that sank so he wouldn't see it floating in there. And maybe he's dumb enough to go and chase and jump in the water and chase it. And then I can either call for help or start the boat or do something to try to get away. Is that ideal? Maybe not, but it's probably better than what she had done there. Uh, and I also think it's better than if she tried to swim for it because I don't think she would have necessarily beaten him. Uh, not that she knows that he's got teleportation powers, but he does have teleportation powers. So, uh, you know, he just teleported onto the beach. But I digress. Those are my thoughts on how to try to survive that opening of Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Phoenix, Manhattan. But again, I would start by not being there. <laughs> just don't be on that boat, man. Stay away from boats. Stay away from Jason. Stay safe, guys. Thanks, Professor Victor. That was great. You had some interesting points, like sacrificing Susie to save yourself if you were Jim. That definitely would be an option. Um, you brought up some interesting points for Susie as well. Great idea about throwing something in the water to make a splash to make Jason think that she jumped in the lake. That was really original. I love that idea. That was a great point with that. And also your point about not being anchored out on a ship in Crystal Lake where they obviously are aware of the legend of Jason Voorhees. You're kind of putting yourself in this urban legend, dangerous type of environment just for thrills. And like I said, if he just didn't even do that, they definitely would have survived. And I think if Jim and Susie actually used your options, they may have had a better chance to survive or at least avoid getting one nail in the coffin. I thought you did a great job. If you're watching this, let me know in the comments down below how you thought Professor Vector did. Let everybody know. So thanks again. That was a lot of fun. I, this is a fun series so far. Again, if you'd like to participate, please send me an email. Link will be in the description down below. I'll sign you a death again that I gave one now in the coffin. You get to tell everybody how you would fix it. Should be a lot of fun hearing all those responses. Thanks again, everybody. Don't forget to check out Professor Victor's channel. Link in the description. And don't forget to check out my videos every Friday with a new Nails in a Coffin episode. Those are a ton of fun. So you can learn more about how I give people one now in the coffin for making stupid decisions because there's a new Nails in a Coffin episode every single Friday. Take care. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It would keep me motivated making these videos. I really appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Stay happy. Be good to each other. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. And remember, with great kills, there must also come great nails.